Wait a second, I almost forgot I was making a video there for a second. I'm digging the cool zombie nation. Because I feel like a zombie right now. It's Monday more no, Monday afternoon ish. And I've just finished watching Oh, this is picking up stuff really good. It's rare that things work with me. I just finished watching Super Card of Honor. So I've gone I've made a video Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday, Tuesday. Even, even my cat like thinks this is the new bedroom, right? She's but uh, she, she 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 she's also been on YouTube. Quite a bit too. But as you can tell from my thumbnail, my custom thumbnail, because I'm getting a little better at that. And I can still go to a couple NXT shows, and I still have some pictures left over. I can still make some more thumbnails. More custom thumbnails versus everyone seeing this ugly mug. But, well, I'm just kind of trying to recover. I know later tonight, Tomorrow morning ish. Have to do my normal Monday Night Raw. It should be an interesting Monday Night Raw considering some. But well, wait a second. Supercar of Honor has nothing to do with WWE. It's about Ring of Honor and New Japan Wrestling. But let's talk about that. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was like the one lost match. Weird. Oh wow! I don't even know who won that. I'll have to do a little bit more research, but I will mention that though. I think Rush won. Oh yeah, that's right. My notes somewhere. That was a. Yeah. But let's see here. So again, oh, oh, there it is. Palm Castle, you rush. Not much though. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, there was this. Let's talk about some Ring of Honor and New Japan. Well, the first thing to start off. Yeah, I'd like to say, like to welcome everyone to the Hobo and something YouTube page. I'm going to fix that image. That's the next thing on my list while I upload videos. So much to do today still. And let's see here. My notes are all kind of backwards. So let's see here. Oh, I don't even know who won. Shoot, that was just fun. Well, we'll start off. Nonsense. Again, thank you for watching. Um, so the show started off with the Honor Rumble. And this was a fun, fun match. It's your typical Royal Rumble where it's really a spot fest. More so for the entrances. The Ring of Honor in New Japan really spent a lot of time and copied, mimicked, both the way that the WWE does their WrestleMania entrances and the way that tri that Triple A does their Triple Mania Triple Mania entrances because the entrances and over the top um some entrances were actually longer than the matches but I'll get into that the Honor Rumble was really fun though it was a spot fest oh I like to send a shout out to my friend Matt Kayfabe, who's also, if you ever do go up to New England, check out, I want to say it's New NECW, New England Championship Wrestling. And keep your eye on that guy, Diamond, Diamondback Jack Maverick. Tricky fellow. Actually, right now, Diamondback Jack Maverick 
here in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling. He's actually the current under the bridge champ. And just because he sent me some video, because he had the opportunity to go there live, this dirty pin goes out to you. Again, whenever you interact with this guy, Hobo Tom, you get a special shout out and a special video just dedicated only to you. And I'm actually getting more videos by the, I'm getting more gifts by the moment, which is really cool. So I'm actually learning how to do stuff on this computer besides make a fool of myself. That's cool. So um, with this, he knows one of my favorite wrestlers is Horoyano. Break, break, break. So again, check out this video of Yano's entrance. Again, it's just fun to see who actually goes into the Honor Rumble. I think Cheeseburger was there. I think when I was texting him, I think I can only name like nine Ring of Honor people. So it's not like I know they, they give their names and I'm like, okay. So, but uh, to the surprise entrance, well, Toriano, I thought was going to be in there. He's, he just makes it so much more fun. Great Muda was there. He came in. I thought Muda was dead, unfortunately. But he's still alive and wrestling, which is awesome. And I remember him versus Sting. Him versus Hulk Hogan it was actually a really good Hulk Hogan match. Um, Jushin Thunder Liger was there and a whole list of others. Um, this was a pre-show, and actually I was at work, so I don't know what happened. But you know what? It's a Royal Rumble. Yano's there. Great Mood is there. It's going to get a cheeseburger rating. And then let's get on to the main card. Here, so, first match was Will Ospreay versus Jeff Cobb. This was a short match. I mean... I think mainly based on my biases from watching New Japan, I'm so used to longer matches. They packed a lot in a really short time. This was really a semi spot fest. I mean, well, Osprey, he does super flippy, flippy stuff. He just throws himself around with, with no abandon. Jeff Cobb's those no stuff. He's way too strong. And the one time he tossed Will Osprey like across the ring. It was it was a good match. Um, Jeff Cobb eventually won. Uh, Will Osprey again. It was with this match. It was only about ten minutes. Me, it was under that fifteen minute mark, which kind of shocked me because New Japan typically has like matches last forever. I think the main event lasted about 45, 50 minutes. So when they only gave 10 minutes, a perfect 10 minutes, this match, I was kind of like, that's it. So it was, don't get me wrong, it was a good match. They packed a lot in. It just seemed to be lacking something. And again, it might have been me with my expectations. But to me, this was, it was a good match. 
It was a ham sandwich match. Again, there was no real story involved. It was spot fest. And they could have drawn it out five more minutes, and I it probably would have been a little bit better. Then we have the Bully Ray Open Challenge. So did I get that one right? Oh, I have to take a look at my predictions. I'll give I'll tell you what happened. Well, it wasn't that. I can kind of keep track as I go. So let's see there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Twelve. So right now I am 0 for 12 because I chose Cole Cabana to win. That was pretty cool. And I chose Will Osprey to win, and he didn't. Good. So then we had the... I forget where it is because I kind of watched it at separate times because I realized that Saturday was getting a little late and I had to wake up the next morning. So the... I'll say the Dalton Castle versus Rush match. It was Okay. I mean, nothing spectacular. I don't know. I don't think I've ever heard of Rush before. Dalton Castle, I've heard. It was a good, solid wrestling match. I mean, nothing super spectacular besides the Dalton Rush heel turn where Dalton Rush attacked the boys. He just beat him up. So he's going to be a heel. I think he's on his way out of Ring of Honor. So he might be breaking things up. But... I don't know who they are. I have no idea who to root for. The crowd was... This is one of those lukewarm matches. This is another ham sandwich match. And I got that prediction wrong too. It was Dalton Castle. And then we have... See, I did this so out of order, it's not even funny. I did, like, the big matches first, and then kind of worked my way backward, beginning, then the middle. So it's all goofy. Then we have the Bully Ray versus the field, and an open challenge, and Flip Gordon came out. And I was smart because I actually chose the field. I said, you know what, whoever Bully Ray is going to face... That is the person I'm going to pick. I chose the field. Let's put a little mark there. This was fun. Um, eventually it did break down just to a brawl. Your word might not go for that. Terrible that I have to take notes on this. Um, it, was, it had a real fight feel to it. Just like a brawl. Um, there were a whole bunch of run-ins. It was, eventually it became a six-man tag event. It was Bully Ray, Silas Young, and and someone else versus Flip Gordon, Matt Cass, and someone else. Again, I'm not really up to speed with all of the Ring of Honor cards. So I'm like, so so once you miss it, if you blink, you're just like, who is that guy in the black trunks? And they all wear black trunks, it seems. So this was pretty. This was, this was again. This was a. It was okay. It was, it was just really a whole brawl. Um, again, all the typical things like you would think, like street fights come out. There were kendo sticks. Still want to know where they get the kendo sticks from. Is there a kendo supply store? Um, how are we really? This is annoying me. But they have the kendo sticks, tables, ladders, chairs. Um, eventually, Silas Young and the other guy. Oh, it was Juice Robinson. What am I thinking of? Gee, but who's the other guy? I forget now. It's terrible. I'm getting old. But whoever it was, Silas Young and the other guy got, got beat really bad. It left 
Bully Ray alone by himself versus the three faces. They did pull off a what? What Spot, which is pretty cool. On to Bully Ray. Um, Flip Gordon hit the 450. Flip Gordon wins. It was fun, but again, hard to get behind people that I have no... Why do I think it's Shane Thornton? I was on Bully Ray's side. I honestly forget. Again, so much wrestling going on for like three days. Three days of straight pro wrestling. Whoa. And this was fun. It was a, I don't know. It was a ham sandwich. Then, I think, so I put Gordon, so I chose the field. So that's good. Summon that match. Ooh, yeah. Then we go to the... And again, I do apologize for this not being in order. Go to the... Sorry, I can never pronounce... Mayu Iowatani versus Kelly Klein. And I said this was going to be the snooze match. I was right. The crowd proved it. It was okay. I mean, I just don't know who any of these people are. I think that kind of hurt me there. But let's see, I have some notes about it. There's somewhere. Scroll. But yeah, both are pretty good. I mean, it was a so so match. I mean, again, I just don't know much about who they were. I don't know why they're fighting besides the Ring of Honor and they fight for championships. And it's more competition based. It wasn't bad, which is good. It wasn't good, which I guess is bad. But it was a ham sandwich match. And any time, if you put on a special show, and it feels like this could have been like a like a TV sh like a like a match on TV, you're just gonna get a ham sandwich. So so Klein won, good because I think I picked her. That's right, Doctor Doctor Tom also got involved here. Hobo, it's two for twelve. Doctor, who did you choose before? Let's see here. An act of competition. If I win, Doctor Time has to come on my show in a wrestling shirt. If he wins, I have to dress up to do a wrestling show. So that's kind of stakes. So he chose the field too. You can always bet on the field. He chose her. Oh no! I actually chose. Wow, I actually chose Rush to win? That's weird. He chose Dalton Castle. He said Brody King would win. I honestly forget if it was there or not. And then... Let's see here. Let's pick things up. We had Ishimori versus Dragon Lee versus Mandito. And... Again, a really short match. They could have done so much more because what they did was amazing. It was just, it was a, 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 again, it's a real spot fest. Uh, really quick. Bandito strong for being a junior, though. I mean, he tossed Ishimori somewhere. Um, Dragon Lee did win, though. Dragon Lee and Bandito eventually like hug it out. Ishimori is the guy that gets the belt and like, loses it. So that's kind of like his story. Again, it was a spot fest. Again, 10 minutes with three guys. That seems way too short. I mean, but because it was a spot fest and it was fun, I was I was thoroughly enjoyed by it. And I'm, it, it, I guess it, it, it left me wanting more, if that makes sense. And I didn't get more, so, so I'm like, that's it. But yeah, it was really good, though. And this got a cheeseburger.
And it's really hard to scoop a, a cheeseburger quality match. So I did I choose someone? Here. I have to go back and forth. Oh my writing stuff. Oh <laughs> Holy heck, I chose Dragon Lee. Dr. Tom's gonna have to wear a wrestling shirt for the next predictions. It's gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> he hates wrestling. So they're so trashy looking. Then it's the tag team match. It was the Grills of Destiny versus the Briscoes versus Villain Enterprises versus Evil and Sonata. Evil and Sonata had an amazing entrance. It looked like they could kind of like did the Frankenstein entrance for Evil. I'll tell you what, they spent at no time did a wrestler come out three times to three different theme musics that wasn't his. There was no flatulence. The announcers did their announcing. All the TV production went, unless I really missed something, went the way it should. I'm, I'm sure there's always probably like a second or two delay somewhere, but nothing that you would catch on to. So again, the, so, so again, the talent was A+. Plus. The entrances were A+. Plus. I guess the production was just an A. I don't know what more they could have done. So I'll give it an A, though. I guess that's and filet mignon reading. I don't do A, B, C's, D's just anymore. But again, it was it was it was good. The, the, the crowd really was dead for the women's match. They began to came back to life a little bit again because it was a spot fest. Um, this was also again another good fun match. I mean, the Briscoes just fight people. G.O.D., you could see them cursing. The Briscoes would curse at them. Elon and Sonata just look confused. The one guy from Villain Enterprises, P.C.U. Ooh! He took that one spot. Look like he fell on his head. He has to do those crunches more. Because the Girls of Destiny gave him a powerbomb to the outside of the ring, onto the ring apron. Dude, I thought he... And just knocked himself out. The way his head hit that ring apron. Which, by the way, is the hardest part of the ring. Everyone else says that, so I might as well say that too. So again, it was overall really... F it was a fun match. And at the end... We saw... Oh, Enzo Amore... Oh, Enzo Amore. And I got one word for you. Let's spell it out for you. S-A-W-F-T. Soft. It was Enzo and Big Cash showed up. They came out of nowhere, too. They, they do a great job of hiding. And, yeah, they got... They, they jumped over the barricade, which... People were shocked at. But the way they did it, it made it feel so real. So I think Enzo and Big Cass. I get I don't know I don't know if they own their, own their names though. They might have to change their names to be in Ring of Honor. But again, Enzo he did that one silly music video. I mean Big Cass could just call himself Colin Cassidy. So Enzo could probably change something and people would still know who it is or or unless he or unless he owns the enzo part and just has to drop him more so it'd be enzo and colin cassidy that makes sense yeah this was another fun match nothing says the one spot and the run-in nothing spectacular though again it's hard to screw up good cheeseburger
Then you have Tanahashi versus Zack Sabre Jr. Oh, amazing. They actually gave this match probably the right amount of time. Again, it's at 15. Closer, probably, I think closer to 20 minutes. But for a change, again, tag match, it was about a good 20 minutes, which again is what it should be. Um, this again was a good 20 minutes, and now you can tell that they're now now they're getting into the new Japan flow of things. Matches are getting longer. But again, it's an amazing, solid match. I'm just happy they give us a match time because Tanahashi is really good. He's a ring general. He's a tactician. He's your thinking man's wrestler. He has a game plan. He knows what he wants to do, but he also has the ability to adjust to what the opponent's going to give him. And you can see that where where he started to adjust his, I don't want to say skill set, but his moves where he began to become a counter wrestler, counter more of Zack Sabre's, again, more, very more technical grappling holds. With that said, Tanahashi may be a ring general, but tranquilo for a moment. Zack Sabre Jr. is the Lord of the Ring. His mastery of technical wrestling, submission skills, mat wrestling, unparalleled. And this, this is where things really start to pick up. And you could say, almost a tale of two shows. You have you have the, well, you have three shows. You have the good, the bad, the ugly. It starts off good, goes to the ugly, and then it builds back. So it starts. Yeah, so you have the ugly, which is like the cheeseburger, I guess. So it goes from ugly to bad, back to ugly, and then amazing. Again. So again, Zack Sabre wins. Again, he still does all those submission holes. That just looks so good. Because this match, again, this is a surf and turf match. And if you don't think it can't get any better than that, it does. So then we actually go to the part that I actually spent a lot of time on. This is what Ellen posted for free. In a fair sense. Let's see here. So I had... I have winning in the tag match. Oh, wow. I had, I had it pretty good. I actually had the Girls of Destiny. They won. Dr. Tom... This shirt's for you. I'll make sure I don't wash it either. Um, I had Zack Sabre Jr. winning. We're already at 50-50 booking. Dr. Tom's doing terrible. He's only He only got two matches right. He must not care about wrestling. I don't know. And then we split for NXT TakeOver. And then WrestleMania. Split too. That's weird. But Dr. Tom does not follow New Japan. The one and only Bo Tom does. So then we get to the really good stuff. Let's see, here go those notes. No, where I actually wrote a lot down. Ibushi versus Naito. Amazing. Ibushi is just so athletic in the ring. Um, really does a lot of, he works off the combinations. There's a lot of counter wrestling. Night is just so good. At this point, the crowd got excited. They're like, okay, all the no names are done. Naito, the crowd goes absolutely bonkers. It's so fun. I mean, they really need this match. I mean, just such a good professional wrestling match. That Hurakurana that Bushi hit on Naito. Naito spiked himself into the ring. I mean, there were the double strikes, the yay boos. I think the crowd started to mock more Ronaldo. They're chanting, Mama Mia. So, again, that was something 
more Ronaldo do that, and more Ronaldo's terrible sometimes. But again, Bushi Naito. Oh, this is a sure classic f for New Japan. They're so well matched. Kota Bushi took the belt off Naito too. Kota Bushi's, or did he retain? I almost forget who holds the belts. I, th I think Abushi, Abushi won, beat Naito again. Naito was the IC champion, so now Abushi is. But it's just a truly amazing match. So let's see who I pick. Oh, I picked Abushi to win. Doing really good for a change. I know it's not a bad pick, though. But again, this is your filet mignon match. And then we have, in a ladder match, it's a three-way ladder match. It was Jay Lethal versus Matt Tavin versus Marty Squirrel. Again, oh, the entrances were so amazing. They had the piano. They had a real pianist. I said pianist. But they had the, the piano player there. Uh, just the entrance is so over the top. I mean, they really took a page out of Vince's book and say, you know what? If you're going to have one really good event, make the entrances amazing. And that was, again, the entrances were so much fun to watch. Um, I know part of it, I think it looked like Matt Tavern went to, like, race himself. It looked like he broke his wrist on something. I mean, he, like, and then he, like, looked, then he took a table spot. Ooh! Oh, he broke a rib or something. I mean, Jay Lethal goes under the, <laughs> Jay Lethal, the, Jay Lethal goes, Jay Lethal goes under the ring. Tables, ladders, chairs. I forget if there are any kendo sticks involved. You need your tables, ladders, and chairs. <laughs> Poor Marty Squirrel. I mean, Matt Tavern just, just beats on him. Marty Squirrel was there so that Jay Lethal could take, I guess, a protected loss. Again, they have the ladder spots. I mean, it was just a really fun match. I mean, poor Marty Squirrel and Matt Tavern went through the table. However, Matt Tavern eventually shoved Jay Lethal off the ladder. They were fighting up on it. Maybe he either shoved him off or pulled a wrestling move because Jay Lethal was poised to win. But Matt Tavern won. And neither of us had him. But again, it's a really it was a fun match. If I knew who Matt Tavin really was, I'd probably enjoy it more. And again, once you start having a spot fest, again, the, the crowd was going crazy. They want tables, ladders, chairs. They got it. So again, this was fun, though. This was really good, though. This is your surf and turf match. And then, in the main event of the evening, in this corner, we have the challenger, Kazuchika Okada, the Rainmaker. And in this corner, the champion, the de facto leader of Bullet Club, the Switchblade. Jay And I'll tell you what, if you didn't think they could top the Ibushi Naito match, they did. This again was at, I think it was almost 50 minutes. This was an amazing match, though. Again, the entrances. So amazing. Probably the reason why it was a 50 minute match. It was a 40-minute wrestling match. It was a 40-minute wrestling match. But it was like 10 minutes worth of entrances. It was awesome. You know, Kata, now that he's kind of regained his composure, he looks like he looks like 
New Japan Pro Wrestling Championship belt. I mean, this was just a really classic opening of any New Japan match. I mean, it was I mean, for the most part, the whole match was counter after counter. Uh, Jay White eventually did get a switchblade off on Okada. Okada kicked out of that. Okada hit, I think, he would always go for the Rainmaker, but Jay White would always counter that. I mean, at one time, Okada did Jay White, and I forgot to write it down. I think it was like, it was something off the top rope. Jay White just laid there. Jay White, dead. And again, Gengado gets involved. Okada starts chasing after Gato. He's just there to get beat up. Um, again, that was one amazing suplex. Oh, it was a sleeper suplex from Jay White. Again, amazing. I almost can't say enough about this match. I mean, that sleeper suplex looked really cool looking too. I mean, just like Ibushi and Naito, I think this is cool. Because again, it, 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 more so with the Ibushi Naito match, it's let's see who, who falls on their neck for the most, always loses. This match, not so much. Let's just see how close we can tow that line, though. Again, this is a truly amazing match, though. Um, the end came, end game, um, Okada beat up Jay White enough, he managed to get one rain, one Rainmaker, the announcers are going wild, second Rainmaker, he's the third Rainmaker, and somehow switched that into a Tombstone pile driver. Hit the tombstone pile driver. Did not go for the pin though. He tried this before. He's like, I have to do one more. Picked him up, hit another rainmaker. Jay White was on such wobbly legs. Okada picks up the one, two, three. Okada the rainmaker is champion once more. So again, again, oh, if you didn't know. This was another Filet Mignon match. With all that being said, neither of us shows Matt Tavern. Didn't even know who he was. I did pick Okada. So did Hobo Tom. Or so did Dr. Dr. Tom has to wear a wrestling shirt. So again, wow, I, I would be in, I got 7 out of 12 right. Puts me one above that. So I think Stephanie McMahon was whispering something into their heads. I earned myself a Steph head. Mainly because I was better than 50-50 booking. So I am inside the head of Stephanie McMahon. Obviously, it's in the head of people at New Japan and Ring of Honor. Again, that was a really fun, amazing show. Again, the like all I don't know. It was like almost it was almost like that weird WWE event. The good parts are really good. The, the and there's no really bad parts where it's so it's not WWE like, but the okay parts really okay. Again, you have the really good and the okay, and that was the Super Card of Honor. Again, a really fun match, a really f fun thing to go through. Again, it didn't feel as long. I think this was like five or six hours long. So it didn't feel like a slog, mainly because the matches that really needed time, again, like the championship match, it's got the time. Uh, some of the matches seem just a little on the short side. Hey, that's just the opinion of one hobo. 
I mean, I go out every other night and collect aluminum from the road. So, what can I? What do I know? I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and stay tuned later for.